to Verse TV. I'm Amy, registered dental hygienist and Verse ambassador. You know when you go for your routine checkup at the dentist and they say, okay, well, it's time for your x-rays, and everyone just collectively sighs. You can already imagine how painful it's going to be and how you're about to gag and bite down on those nice jagged edges in the soft floor of your mouth. We just all love our checkups, don't we? Today, we're going to talk about one really important radiograph that won't gag you and can help the dentist collect invaluable information. I'm talking about cone beam computed tomography, or CDCT, for those of us who like a good tongue twister. We'll just call it CDCT. I'll also explain for patients why this x-ray is important and what the dentist can gain by exposing it. I'm at my home office today um, in Oklahoma City, Dental Innovations. So without further ado, I'm going to take you to the back and we'll get started. First, let's demonstrate how to properly expose a CDCT. In our office, Dr. Mark Shirley has the latest technology for our patient's use. This is an Axios CBCT machine. We can expose a 3D image, a normal panoramic image, part of the upper or the lower jaw, even bite wings for the patient that can't tolerate traditional imaging. This machine is really versatile and it can save the patient from unnecessary exposure, especially when we only need one area and not the entire mouth. The CBTC scan uses a lower dose of radiation than a regular CT scan. No radiation will remain in the patient's body once the scan is complete. So today I'm going to expose a 3D image for us to view. So I'll just have my patient step into the machine here and then I'll show you how to do this. So Jamie, if you'll step forward and stand straight back for me and put one hand on each bar. And then I'm gonna have you bite just right down on that little piece of plastic if you can kind of feel where that groove goes in your teeth, okay? Are you standing straight tall as you can? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so for this machine, um, we're just gonna push this light button, which turns on the lights. We're gonna have him light himself up, which is really great. They have a mirror to see. So if you will line that straight down the middle of your nose. Okay, does that feel good for you? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I'm gonna lower this down for you just a little bit. We want them standing straight and tall, but we don't want their chin to be too far up because we want to be able to get exactly the anatomy we'd like. Um, and then we just kind of hold them in there. We're pushing this button. We're gonna push this button and hold the front of his head in as well. Um, and so typically you would be looking for the um, allotragus line, but on this machine, you actually have a light here that goes across just kind of the forehead and then the bottom of their jaw. And that's just making sure that we're getting from condyle to condyle and then all the way across the mandibular jaw. Jane, if you'll close your lips all the way around that uh, piece of foam and go ahead and swallow for me. Put your tongue to the roof of your mouth and you're gonna hold as still as you can while the machine goes all the way around your head, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and film the exposure just so you can see. This one's really was for quiet, it's, it's really nice. Um, I'm gonna stand a little bit behind the swallow just so I can see him. Usually I move a little bit further away, but we'll watch it. machine going around but it's like a whisper quiet beep so and that's it so we've got Jade's x-ray up on the screen now and we can see that he has some effective wisdom teeth here here a tiny little one there and one here so um, for Jade he's 20 um, so that would be the reason why we would take this type of x-ray so we can see does he have impacted wisdom teeth he's already had ortho so that was not an issue um, those are the typical reasons why we would take this x-ray. We can also see airway, um, so I'll show you that in just a little while, but Jaden, you gotta have your wisdom teeth extracted, even the baby one. So... Oh no! <laughs> Another thing I love about this technology is if you take an x-ray and it's not the greatest, um, you don't like the way that it turned out, you can see um, that it's just not as thick here as you'd like it to be. You have um, the ability to kind of change what that looks like. We have some presets on the side. We can just kind of fix it um, see if we have any that make it look better. Some of them make it look worse. Um, obviously, the patient's not sitting in my chair, so I can't recall what their jaw exactly looked like. Um, but if you did, you could definitely be able to pick the right one. Also, when, um, when we bring the line down, to the center here, kind of right above the mandibular teeth. I can also manipulate it down on the bottom to where I can actually follow the patient's jaw and make it look correct on the screen. So it's really pretty amazing. Um, you can see now how it's kind of filled in more 
on that side, the bone looks even on each side. You can also just have it synchronized on each side, which is really cool. So it gives us the ability to do a lot more than a typical piano would do. The reason I really chose this one, um, I really like the fact that I, this day this patient came in, I just took a routine PA because um, this patient had a root canal and I wanted to just check on that. Um, she had had symptoms prior, they went away, we wanted to kind of make sure and see how the patient was doing. When I took that x-ray, it looked a tiny bit dark. Um, I, I, I hope you can see that. It, it doesn't really look like much. I didn't think much of, of it. Um, but if you were to go look at the scan that we took, um, and you can kind of hover over that area, you can see by zooming in and you can kind of scroll in, you can see what a large amount um, of bone is missing from that area, what a huge um, abscess that is. Um, and so if we wouldn't have taken this, we would have never known. Um, because the CT, the cone beam, it can zone in on a single tooth root and can allow us to section through to see the bone easily. Um, if we hadn't taken the skin on the state, we would have missed the large infection or abscess in the patient's upper molar, and um, it's actually a reinfection here. So in this particular case, we gave the patient the choice to see an endodontist. Um, Dr. Shirley always gives that option. Um, and if not, then we could, you know, let them see if they could retreat the area, or we just gave her the option to take the tooth out and, and go ahead and replace it with an implant. Um, so you can see here the floor of the sinus. If the patient were to have denied the radiograph, we would not have known this infection was present. Um, and an infection this severe could possibly have eaten the sinus floor, causing severe headaches, drooping eyelids, immobility of the eye, bulging eyes, even cavernous sinus thrombosis. So in a nutshell, this type of infection is where the bacteria can travel to the brain and cause sudden death. We don't typically tell our patients, hey, you're about to die. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is this would have uh, would not have definitely occurred, but dental professionals are trying to explain to their patient that the possibility of an infection being super serious, and we're just stressing the importance of taking these kinds of x-rays like a CDCT when your dentist or periodontist recommends. I'm really glad we have this technology available to use every day um, so that we can stress to our patients how important it is. From here, uh, Dr. Shirley was able to virtually, or he, he will be able to virtually place the implant so he, and he can know precisely what size will be best to fit underneath the sinus. Without this technology, we run the risk of penetrating the sinus or misaligning the implant. When your dentist uses a CBCT machine for your implant placement, you can rest assured it will be done with precision. You can also use te this technology to screen for sleep apnea by viewing our patient's airway. We don't diagnose sleep disorders in an office, but it is a great screening tool to use to see a constricted airway and recommend a patient may need a sleep study. I will usually, usually ask the patient just some basic questions about snoring and sleep quality as well before the doctor comes in. Once a sleep study has been done and sleep apnea is diagnosed, we can also make snore guards for our patients if they can't or just won't tolerate the CPAP machine. So you can see um, in this area here, this is the airway. This is what we're looking at. So it gets pretty thin as you come down towards the tongue. Um, I did ask this patient if he snored and he just kind of laughed and said that he didn't think so, but he had been told by his wife that he did. So we did recommend that he get a sleep study. Um, he wasn't very excited about wearing a large sleep mask or even just a nasal cannula. And so we recommended that he come and see us as soon as he's done so that we can maybe make him a snore guard and make him and his wife happy and have him pull more restful sleep. So we use the standard panoramic setting to view our younger population's mixed dentition. This allows for an even lower dose of radiation when a 3D image is not warranted. This is completely up to each dentist or orthodontist, it's just what we choose here at my practice. This type of radiograph can help plan for orthodontics in the future by identifying congenitally missing teeth, crowding, the health of the upper and lower jawbone, and any permanent tooth impactions, as well as an array of cysts, tumors, and other potential issues we can have in the jaw area. We can then refer to an orthodontist for treatment or keep in our practice if the dentist chooses. So this patient was about 11, and you can see still has a couple of baby teeth um, needing to exfoliate. And then he did have a problem on the top, so sent for some early orthodontic uh, intervention um, where we allowed the canines to come down just by making room. And the teeth were looking great when he came in, so a little bit of a bite issue, um, just a little bit of a malalignment of the jaw, but coming along really nicely because of some early intervention um, where we identified some problems. So this can really help out with that. 
Um, we don't really need a 3D scan um, on a kiddo of this age. We typically don't do those until they're around 16 or so, kind of starting to look for those wisdom teeth. Dennis and endodontists can also use this technology to determine the presence of a fracture in the tooth much easier than traditional 2D imaging. When you expose a 2D image, angulation and overlapping can cause distortion, where 3D images have much more detail and are better suited to show the complex anatomy of a root canal system. Using 3D imaging prior to a surgery, such as an implant or a root canal, is critical to avoid damage to nerves and other vital anatomical structures. Treatment planning using a CBCT is more thorough, predictable, and generally much more minimally invasive than a standard treatment with two-dimensional images. I know it sometimes feels as though your dentist is asking for a lot of radiographs, but please know that we care about the health of your mouth and your overall well-being. I hope I demonstrated how this type of x-ray can benefit you as a patient and also as a clinician, and that you'll be encouraged to use this technology to benefit you. As a patient, have you been diagnosed with something you found helpful based off a of CBCT? And how else does your practice, if you're a clinician, use this type of radiograph? Please tell me in the comments. We'd love to hear your stories. Thank you for watching. Also, you said necessary instead of unnecessary? Oh. <laughs> jagged. Those jagged? Maybe jacket. I mean, whatever. Let's just freaking keep starting over because this is, I can't read. Alright, I'm gonna light on. Oh, that sucks.